Hey guys, broadcasting the solutions to lab 4.2. I apologize that it's been a long time since um, I've done this one. Uh, Cassie reminded me that I didn't post these vodcasts, and I apologize about that. So I'm actually not sure what I did here in the pre lab notes for this. So don't worry about putting that in if you miss class. Um, so what we did is we kept the magnesium constant. Yeah, we had a strip of magnesium that we kept constant across this reaction, and we increased the molarity of the hydrochloric acid from 3 to 6. We doubled it. Um, and what I believe happened when we did that was um, when the molarity was 3, is say the it took about, well, let's go through and let's calculate this. So label the test tubes. Um, okay. And in the 6-molar tube, um, it took about 30 seconds. And um, it says take the reciprocal of this and place it in the rate column, the data table. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, that will be 1 over 30. Um, and for the 3-molar one, it actually took about double that period of time. Now, obviously, these are just estimates that I'm doing here right now. But we're going to take the reciprocal of that, and we're going to plop it right there in the table, 1 over 60. Okay. Um, what is the order with respect to HCO? Okay. So we're going to do experiment 1 and experiment 2. Okay. And the rate goes from 3 to 6, or the concentration. And when the concentration is dropped, the rate goes from 160 to 1 30th. So I'm just going to put 160, 1 30th. Um, I do that up and I get 0.5 question mark equals 0.5. So question mark equals 1. So the rate order is 1. Call it first order. Um, assuming it's 0 with respect to mg, write the rate law equation. Okay, so rate equals K H C L to the first, but you don't have to put the first. What's the overall order? Zero plus one equals zero. Pick an experiment and plug in the values to get K. Okay, so rate equals K H C L. I'm going to do experiment one. And on experiment one, the concentration was three and the rate was one sixtieth. So 160 equals K times 3. So K equals 1 over 180. And the overall order was 1, so the units are going to be um, seconds to the negative 1, because it would be 1 over seconds molarity to the overall power minus 1. Okay, and this would go to 1. All right. So, was that number four? Yeah, it was. Okay, five. Sketch a graph and label the axis that shows the linear decrease of magnesium over time. Okay, so magnesium was zero. Sorry, guys. You're welcome. We've got the Olympia selling people here visiting. You guys are on the internet. Right? You guys are on the internet. You guys want to do a plug for the Olympia right now? It's a camp. It's a. It's recording you. You're on. The oh, it's a video. But you're going to be on YouTube. So tell them what you want to say about your. All right, so uh, three pieces of lumpia for two dollars with the sauce. Recording right now. Um, find Jessica Twasson, oh. Justin Maluna, Jonathan Lamb, and Agnes Fajardo, seniors. All right. Represent room two hundred six. Yeah. Woo. All right. So it's just oh. going to be the concentration of magnesium versus time, and that's going to be the linear slope. That's negative k. Um, HCl is first order. So the concentration of HCl in order to straighten that out. Hi, sister. Um, two minutes? Okay. Take the natural log of HCl in this case and versus time, and that's going to be a linear decrease. Um, how many moles of HCl were used in experiment one? Okay, so in experiment one, the molarity was three, and we used 12 milliliters of it. So... Liters times molarity equals moles. So I have 0.012 liters times 3 equals some moles. I'm not sure I don't have my calculator on me. So 
but this value is just 0 0.012 times 3. How does changing the concentration affect the rate on a molecular level? Okay, it increases rate by increasing the number of molecular collisions. Okay. What is the sign on delta S for this reaction? Let's go back to it. Okay. Um, we have a solid and an aqueous going to an aqueous and a gas, all right? So it gets messier. So you, solid plus aqueous goes to aqueous plus gas, therefore delta S is positive. Delta H is negative, it released heat. What are the spontaneity conditions? So, if delta H equals negative and delta S equals positive, it's going to be spontaneous at all temperatures. Good job. Um, do your observations confirm this answer? Yes. Um, reaction was spontaneous at room temperature. And just for you guys who are interested, room temperature is 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius. You got that by adding 273. Okay. Have a great day, guys. Take care.